From Nashville, Tennessee, we invite you to join us for the Amazing Grace Bible Class from the Madison Church of Christ. Explain, uh, all of you understand it, but for the purpose of our taping, we'll explain to our viewing audience that, again, the reason for the backdrop is the drama tonight with our summer spotlight. As of next Sunday, that will all be gone, but we're excited about what's going to happen this week as we anticipate that. Hey, you're turning your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. We're in a series that I'm calling The Greatest Questions Ever Asked. All of these questions are straight from Scripture. Today we're going to look at one of the more obscure interrogatives found in the Bible. In fact, at first glance, it might not appear to have any significance or any implications to your life at all. But by the time we're finished, perhaps you'll see some things that are extremely important in your walk with God. In 2 Kings 6, Elisha is the great prophet in Israel. The successor to his mentor Elijah 
Elisha has begun a school for future prophets. And it has grown to the point that they can no longer have it in the facility where, where it now rests. And so they've gone to a new site and begun clearing land for where the new facility will be. Now, if you're with me in 2 Kings 6, let's turn the monitors up just a little now, just a little bit. Read beginning at verse 1 with me. The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to live. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied, and he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Most of us haven't spent a lot of time as lumberjacks, but you picture the scene, don't you? Most of the men in this audience have handled an axe at one time or another, and you know that the centrifugal force from swinging that axe over and over and over again eventually loosens the axe head. And so as this young seminarian lumberjack began to swing away, on one swing the axe head loosened to the point that it flew off the handle and into the river. It's a simple story. And in it, the prophet asks a very simple question. In verse 6, he inquires, where did the axe head fall? From that question, I want to make a spiritual application this morning. You see, I believe that God wanted to show us much more than the fact that one day, a long time ago, ago he made a piece of iron float. The God who created a trillion galaxies and who put everything on the face of this earth and who came to this earth in the form of His Son and who healed the sick and, and cured the lepers and who made the, the lame to walk, the God who's going to come back again and melt all of creation in a fervent fire, He didn't need to go out of His way to show me that a five-pound piece of iron could float. No, I think this axe head stands for something. In fact, and I have a place for you to put it on your outline this morning, I believe the axe head represents the power God wants to channel through your life. It represents the power God wants to channel through your life. In other words, the axe head represents the tools that God places in your hands to effectively do His work. This young seminarian lumberjack like the Christian today was applying his presence and his effort to do something worthwhile for God, but he found out without an axe head the presence and the effort weren't enough. You don't cut down trees without the axe head being in place and being sharp. And I think this lesson is going to hit home with lots of folks today. The very fact that you are in this assembly indicates that your interest and your effort are there. But how many trees are you felling for God? How productive are you in your Christian life? How satisfied are you right now with the fruit of your labor? See, many Christians, just like this young student, they've lost their ax head. They're not what they could be. They're not what they should be. In many cases, they're not even what they used to be. There's a lot of effort expended, but such little fruit received. Oh, they still go through the motions, still swing and swing and swing and rub elbows with real lumberjacks. And they talk about the days when the trees used to fall. Boy, that was something. But not many trees are falling for them now. No fruit, no power, no joy. They've lost the axe head. Reminds me of a story I heard about a young lumberjack who went into a camp as a rookie. And first day, he, he was prepared and ready and gung-ho, and he went out. And all day long, he worked up in the great northwest. And by the end of the day, he had felled 20 huge trees. When he got back in camp around that campfire, he was bragging about how well he did. And one of the veteran lumberjacks put his arm around him and said, You know, I believe 20 might be a first-day record for a rookie. He said, Top men around here do 30 trees a day. He said, You keep it up. I believe in a short period of time you'll be right there. The next day, that young lumberjack, eager to impress, got up 15 minutes earlier. He cut 15 minutes off his lunch hour, and he pounded and hammered and sawed away. And, and finally, when he finished, at the end of the day, only 18 trees had been felled. He was rather depressed. He said, I'll get up 30 minutes earlier tomorrow. I'll work all the way through my lunch hour. 
The third day, only 16 trees had fallen. By the end of the week, he was down to about a dozen. Swallowing his pride, he kind of moped his way into camp, and he talked to that veteran lumberjack, and he said, I don't understand. He said, the harder I try, the behinder I get. And the veteran lumberjack looked at him and said, have you taken the time to sharpen your accent? The young man looked up and rolled his eyes and kind of sighed, and he said, no. He said, I didn't take time to sharpen the axe head because I had so much to do. Folks, I believe if God were to lean over right now and whisper something in many of our ears, that what he would whisper in the ears of the preachers and the elders and the deacons and the Bible school teachers and the counselors and the ministry workers, he would whisper, have you taken the time to sharpen your axe head? He might even ask, have you taken time to see if it's still in place? Or do we just keep swinging and swinging and swinging and wondering why we're not getting anywhere? See, if we've lost the axe head or if the axe has become dull, our work becomes very difficult because it's not designed to be that way. And if you've lost the axe head, the joy of fruitfulness for God is ebbed. Your prayer life becomes stagnant. The zealousness, the earnestness, it's gone. The joy of being in Christ, which is supposed to be like a fountain welling up inside of you, that fountain just dries up. And we don't see any fruit of all we're about. I thought about another story I read about some time ago at a university in the Northwest, and it involved lumberjacks as well. It was a study on motivation. And this university in, in their psychology department took two groups of lumberjack. They paid one group of men the same price that they'd been making, same wage, to just go do what they'd always done, just chop down trees. But they took a second group and said, we want you to use the flat edge, the blunt edge of the axe. And we'll pay you twice your regular wage. We just want you to pound it against the tree. Just, just keep going. And said, do it as long as you want. We'll pay you double wages. The test group using the blunt edge of the axe had all quit within half a day. And as the last lumberjack from that test group was walking away, he was shaking his head, and they did the little exit interview, and he said, no money or no money? He said, this is no fun. When I swing the ax, I have to see the chips fly. Truth be told, I think a lot of us become worn and tired and weary and even bored because we're swinging the ax, but we're not seeing the chips fly. No fruit, no results, no joy. If I'm talking to you this morning, you need to jot down these five very short but simple observations. Would you write them with me? All from the story. Number one, the axe head was borrowed. It wasn't the property of the one that was using it. Go back to verse 5. We read it a moment ago. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out, it was borrowed. What we've got to come to understand about our spiritual axe heads, that cutting edge that God wants us to have, is this. The power that we have to minister joyfully to others, the power that we're going to have to teach others or to share our faith with Christ, the power that God's going to give us to overcome temptation, the power that we're going to have to lead our families in a righteous way, it's not a personal power. It is a God-given power. It is borrowed in a sense. You don't work up this power through pop psychology. You don't build it up through your own willpower. It's a divine power that comes from Jesus Christ and His Spirit living in you. It's a gift from God. It's not your power. It's not my power. It's God's power. I think about what Zechariah said. We studied him on Sunday night. Old Zechariah was a prophet sent back when the Jews had been released from Babylonian captivity. And they came home and they were all eager to rebuild their temple. And just like a lot of us, they got started and they laid the foundation and then they got tired. They lost their axe head. And for 16 years, not one stone was turned as they left the foundation in place. And finally, Zechariah comes on the scene as a prophet of God and says, hey, we can't just stop with the foundation. Let's start building the temple. And the people were all discouraged saying, whoa, it was hard work just to do the foundation. We don't think we can ever build the whole temple. And here's what Zechariah, God told Zechariah in Zechariah 4, 6, You've heard this before, but listen. So God said to me, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. God told Zechariah, your arms aren't strong enough. Your minds aren't smart enough. 
Your hearts aren't courageous enough. Your plans aren't good enough. Zechariah, if it happens, it'll be because my spirit causes it to happen. People, the Spirit of God is the keen, sharp edge of the axe head. That's the difference. The power that you have to resist temptation or to share your faith or to, to influence your family for Christ, it's not a power created by your own energy. It is the gift you received when you came to Christ. It's a borrowed power that I dare not lose sight of. I dare not ignore lest I lose it. And folks, if I lose it trying to take on this world without God's power through His Holy Spirit, it's like trying to fell a great redwood by beating it with the axe head. You get nowhere fast. It's a borrowed power. Second observation from the story. The axe head was lost. I know that's simple, but let's make sure we see it. The axe head was lost. While he was working, while he was busy, the axe head slipped off the handle and fell into the water. It was lost. Now let me ask you this question. Where do we lose our spiritual axe heads in our walk with God? Anybody here lost it in the waters of worldliness? Has anybody slung it into the rivers of ritual? Anybody here lose your axe head in the creek of criticism? Or did it fly off into the ponds of prayerlessness? Or the stream of secularism? Or is your axe head in the swamp of self-satisfaction? I, I don't know where we lost it. It, it. it can go any number of places, but if we have, what are we going to do about it? There's nothing sadder than losing the axe head. Nothing sadder than losing the power that God wants his man or his woman to have. The axe head was lost. Observation number three. There was a concern over its loss. Now, this is where it gets good. This is where it gets good. In verse 5, as soon as he realized it was gone, Elisha's helper cried out, Oh, my Lord! He was distressed. Now, folks, let's take off our little pious faces. I venture to say that there's not a one of us here or anywhere else, for that matter, who's walked with God over a period of time who hasn't had at one time or another to go look for their axe head. I guarantee you I've lost mine before. Every one of us, if we're honest, there are times when we've got to stop and recheck our priorities and realize something's missing and we've got to repent and we've got to start again. And if you've never done that, I suggest that right now you start looking for your axe head because you've lost it and don't know it. You see, there's concern when it's lost. It thrills me that this fellow was greatly disturbed over losing it. Too many times we go through religious ritual and we go through the activities and we say the right things and we act the right way and we got it so down pat that we can go for days, we can go for weeks, we can go for months, and we've not even realized we've lost the axe head. Because we don't expect anything great from God, we don't ask anything great from God, I never would assume God would use me in any way, in a powerful way. If the, if the biggest thing we ask from God is to bless our meals then it's possible for us to go through life and to lose that power and not even know it. I don't mean this as an indictment personally, but against all of us. Some of us don't know we've lost the axe head because we're flailing at weeds instead of chopping giant oaks. And if you're just going to flail at leaves, you can do just about as well with the axe handle as you can with the axe head. Folks, it's not what's done for God that matters nearly as much as what's done by God. I think we miss that point a lot of times. We all want to do something for God, sure, but that's not nearly what's as important so much as what's done by God. And so, so many times we substitute activity for productivity. We say, well, I've done this for God, or I've done that for God, or I've gone over there for God. We need to stop sometimes and ask this question, have we done it in and with the power of God? Activity isn't always productivity. We can get so busy doing things, things for the church, things for other people, and we need to stop and ask, am I doing things for God or is God doing things through me? The former is good, but the latter is much better. The former, doing things for God, creates activity, but the latter, letting God do things through me, creates productivity, and that productivity occurs when the ax head is in place and when it's sharp. I don't want to pray, God, bless what I'm doing. I want to pray, God, you show me what you're doing and make sure I'm in that blessing. Look at observation number four. The axe head was found where it was lost. 
The axe head was found where it was lost. This is a key point, folks. When the helper said, my Lord, I've lost the axe head and it's borrowed. Look at verse 6 again. The man of God, that's Elisha, asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Now, folks, I know it's simple, but look at this. The axe head was found right where it was lost. Spiritually, that's the same way it is with our walk with God. If you've lost your spiritual axe head this morning, let me tell you where to go find it. You're going to find it the same place you lost it. Remember the parable of the prodigal son? Where did the boy go to find the axe head? He went right back where he'd left it. He'd left it at home. He walked out and went to that far country. He wanted it back. He went right back, and there it was. You know where some of you need to go to find your axe head? Some of you need to go get that dusty Bible off the shelf and crack it and read it. Some of you need to go to that quiet place you had one time. You need to get on your knees and you need to pray again because it's been a long time and you left your axe head there. Some of you need to turn around, maybe not right this second, but when you leave here, turn around to your spouse sitting next to you, the one that you've been alienated from and you're isolated from. You left your axe head there. Go pick it back up. Matthew 18 says, sometimes we left our axe head with another brother doesn't have to be in your immediate family. And that's the reason Matthew 18, Matthew 5 both say, if you're worshiping, you leave your gift at the altar before you worship and go back and reconcile with the brother. Why? Because until you do, you've lost your accent. You lost your source of spiritual power. And some of us just need to humble ourselves before God the Father because our stubborn pride has sapped away our spiritual power. The prophet said, where did you lose it? Because that's where it's going to be. I want to be real vulnerable and transparent with you here today because I've lost my axe head way yonder more than once. It wasn't all that long ago that I began to hit a real busy streak in my life, and I can remember having morning meetings, one at 6.30, one at 7, the next one at 7 the next morning, and I got up on the run, barely had time to, to take a shower, didn't even brush my teeth one time, isn't that terrible, uh, ran to that meeting. I didn't start out with my quiet time with God. Next week, I went out of town on vacation. Well, that was kind of laid back, and I, I got out of the habit of that quiet time with God again. Lo and behold, the next thing I knew, after a couple of weeks, it turned into a couple of months. Oh, I still had to prepare my lessons, but that's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as sitting down early in the morning and praying. You know what? By the time that couple of months was up, I shamedly saw that the fruit was beginning to just fall from my life. And I'd lost the axe head, and on my knees, I went back to God and said, God, I'm sorry, let me pick it back up. I'll tell you right now something I'm struggling with. It's a little different way, but it's the same principle. In my ministry here, it seems that I'm very susceptible to getting distracted from motivating and influencing and training leaders. See, I believe my greatest job is Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. I'm one of the ones that is here to help equip and train you for the ministry of service. If I'm not careful, I'll allow the devil to contrive and control my schedule to where I'm very busy. There are plenty of things distract me, and all of a sudden it's dawned on me that this church is not as fruitful as it needs to be because I'm not doing as good a job as I can do raising up and training leaders. And to those of you who are ministry leaders, I commit to you that over the next several months you're going to see me more involved in that. I'm going to go right back and pick the axe head up where I left it. And I'm not going to allow the devil to control my schedule. By the power and wisdom of God, I'm going to control that and let his spirit bless that. I don't know where you've left your ax head, but you know where it was. Go there, and that's where you'll find it. Look at the fifth observation as we close. The one who lost it had to be the one who retrieved it. I love verse 7 as we close. Look what it says. Elijah looked at the man and said, lift it out after it was floating. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Say, Steve, what's the significance of that? The prophet, in a sense, could have reached over and picked it up, but no, he couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't pick up his axe head for him. You know, this morning, if I could, I would pick up your axe head for you if you've lost it. In fact, those of you who right now are just kind of spiritually waffling and floundering and you don't sense anything, you're just kind of here and 
He's just kind of flailing with the axe handle. If I could, I'd go get your axe head. I'd stick it on that axe for you. I would put it in your hands. I would wrap my arms around you and put my hands on yours, and we'd start swinging together, and I'd get you in that motion. But I can't do that. I can't do it any more than you could go and pick up my axe head in my quiet time from me. You see, the prophet said, you go in the water and pick it up for yourself. The good news is, if you make that determination, that's exactly what you can do. I've told you before, one of the most amazing concepts to me in all Scripture, in all the universe, is that God gives us the power to choose. Have you ever thought about that? God has chosen only to use human beings to accomplish His will, for the most part. And incredibly, He gives us the power of choice to determine how much power from Him is going to be channeled through us. He put all the stars in the sky, and yet you and I, by one thought, by one word, by one choice, we determine whether any power will go through us. As long as you choose to let the ax head stay in the water, that's where it'll stay. If you choose to pick it up, God can bless your life in a mighty way. Let's bow and pray together as we close. Great God in heaven, from a simple story, we're convicted, Father, that if we're going to fell trees for you, spiritual trees, not pieces of redwood or oak or maple, but if we're going to clear ground for you and for your kingdom, number one, we're going to have to be willing and able, but number two, we're going to have to have the axe in our hand, and Father, we're going to have to have the axe head on there, and that axe head has got to have to be sharp. Father, we recognize humbly right now that you're the giver of that axe head, that you're the provider of the power to do your will. And Father, though we're willing and able, help us to be discerning and keen enough to be able to tell when the axe head is dull or when we've lost it altogether. Father, I believe that there's some in this audience, maybe even many, who, like myself, have gone through a period where they've let the axe head sling off. Father, don't let it lie under the water or in the wilderness. Help us to humbly go back and pick it up. And Father, by our choice, put it on. And by your power to make it work. Father, I would pray right now that you bless our church. That your power would uh, just grow fruit in unimaginable ways. For you're the God who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Father, bless us and use us rightly and willingly to accomplish your will. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like a free transcript of today's lesson, write us at Amazing Grace, Post Office Box 419, Madison, Tennessee, 37116. Please mention the title and number of the lesson when you write. Amazing Grace is brought to you by Churches of Christ. Visit one in your community. Bye.